On February 9th, 2024, a new term was introduced to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Banishment, contextualizing the zone where all cards would go when banished. Previously, cards just were banished with nowhere to go, but now it has been given a form, a place for all the denizens of the different dimension to call their own. In fact, much to the agreement of one of my Quasar commanders over on the Patreon, now would be the perfect time to take a look at one of the game's oldest, well, Archetype is probably the wrong word for it, but a designation that covered a wide group of cards that wielded the second graveyard from the earliest time of the game. You know, back when being banished meant you were removed from the game instead of being just another engine for dragon rulers, metaphys, and god knows what else. So make sure to keep your Euclidean warp field stable, and don't be too dumbstruck, we all know it's bigger on the inside, cause it's time for DD Explained. Before we start the episode, Dueling Nexus has launched a makeshift campaign this month for the Nyx Fumo plushie. Gaze into her glorious visage, her dueling prowess, her stare that betrays a head emptier than any void. We've got until the end of the month to fund this thing, so don't delay. Not only does purchasing this get you a ton of freebies on Dueling Nexus, including credits, contributor time, and rarity tokens, all profits are being donated to Community Forests International, a non-profit organization focused on restoring forests in places like Canada, Zanzibar, bar and Mozambique. Get a cute plushie to add to your collection and help fund a good cause all at the same time. Thank you all so much for your time and now back to the video. So what's the deal with DDs? Well, they don't have any overarching type or attribute. Heck, they don't even really have a cohesive game plan. It might be better to think of them, instead of being an archetype, as a monster card type. You know how a lot of psychic cards have you paying life points to do stuff, or care about your relation between your life points and your opponents? Well, DD are the same way when it comes to banishing. One way or another, they're gonna be involved with the banishment. So because of that, we're not really gonna have a traditional structure like the rest of our explained videos. Instead, it's gonna be more of a pleasant stroll through memory lane, and then we'll cover one actual group of cards because there's too many of them that are DDs to really skip over. Basically, if they have DD or different dimension in their name, we're gonna cover them, as well as some related cards that pass my own personal vibe check, but keep an eye out if there are any that I missed that you feel should have been included, well, that's what the comment section is for. Okay, enough preamble, let's get started. First is the normal monster DD Trainer, a level 1 Dark Fiend monster with 100 attack and 2000 defense, a poor goblin that was sucked into a different dimension. However, he's doing his best with his new destiny. We'll see how that little go-getter got into this situation in a bit, but for now, it's just a little fiend with a big defense. Perfect for all your law of the normal adjacent needs. Though, maybe they could lay off just a bit. Look at the poor thing. DD Crow is a level 1 Dark Winged Beast Monster with 100 attack and defense, and as a quick effect, you can discard this card to the grave to target a card in your opponent's grave and banish that target. You've probably seen this a lot before, it's basically one of the proto hand traps of the game, and it stayed strong ever since. Called by the Grave has taken the top spot when it comes to graveyard interaction, the added negation is pretty cool, but when it comes to sniping spells and traps out of the graveyard, I'm looking at you, Shadal, there's no better option. And it still gets monsters too. It's also technically quicker than Called by is. You can't exactly deploy a quick play spell card from your hand during your opponent's turn, so it doesn't help as much when you're going second. Honestly though, I don't really have much more insight about this card that I haven't already shared in my video Golden Nova's Top 10 Monsters with 100 Attack, but statistically you haven't seen it, so that's all scans. DD Sprite is a level 1 Light Fairy Tuner Monster with 0 attack and 100 defense, and you can special summon this card from your hand by banishing a face-up monster you control. And if you summon this card this way, during your next standby phase, return the banished monster to the field. Now be careful with this, because it doesn't work like you may think. It's not a delayed effect that activates on summon, rather the part that summons the monster back triggers on the following turn. This means if Sprite leaves the field at any time before you summon back that banished monster, it's just going to be stuck in limbo. Granted, that may not be a bad thing. If you like your monsters being banished, this is a quick way to do so while giving you a tuner to boot. And besides, if you do get left out in the cold, unknown expanse of the dark dimension, could you stay mad at this little baby? Yeah, I thought not. DD Scout Plane is a level 2 dark machine monster with 800 attack and 1200 defense. 
And once per turn, during the end phase, if this card is currently banished and was banished this turn, special summon it in face of attack position. This is probably the iconic different dimension monster. Any effect that banishes monsters becomes much better if you can feed Scout Plane to it, because it just comes back for free. Granted, as an 800 attack monster in attack position, but when the game was slower, you weren't in danger of just outright losing by summoning it this way. If you could get a continuous banishing effect on board like Macrocosmos, this could return over and over again, making for fantastic tribute fodder. Or you could banish it from the grave. Your hand, your deck, it doesn't matter. If it ends up in the banishment, scout plans coming back guaranteed. And with some tooling, you could even make use of this as a link summoning tool. With this card, the sky is basically the limit, which, as a plane, it's prepared to reach. DD Telepon is a level 2 Earth Psychic Monster with 500 attack and 1800 defense, and if this card you control is banished, you can banish a Psychic type monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck, then, during your next standby phase, special summon the monster banished by this effect. This is tied with the Earth Psychic pile of monsters, and it actually works really well with the aforementioned sprite. It also has a delayed summon, but a summon all the same. The issue is, the game being the way it is now, a giant rat that, instead of summoning, banishes the monster for a turn before getting the summon is a one-way ticket to a Table 500 replay. Granted, there are some interactions in that Earth Psychic series of cards, but that's beyond the scope of this particular video. If you thought DD was a loose category, covering all the Earth Psychics is gonna be a trip. Dimension Jar is a level 2 Dark Flip Machine Monster with 200 attack and defense, and its flip effect has both players removing from play up to 3 monsters from their opponent's grave. Removing from play was the old templating before banishing was a thing. That's probably gonna come up a lot with these older cards that haven't had Narada in forever, more on that later. This is kind of a doofy way to shred the opponent's grave, though you have to be willing to give up a few of your own if you want to do that. Though, if you're a deck that doesn't run a lot of monsters, since this only hits monsters, this could be built around. Still though, it's probably never going in any of my decks, and honestly, I was about to cut this from the episode entirely. But I noticed, while researching, that while the database has this listed as a flip monster, the printed version of this card does not have flip in its card type. This doesn't really mean anything, the database is the final word on such things, so at worst it could cause a confusing in-paper situation, but a funny printing is still a funny printing. Uh, when are we getting an update to this one, Konami? I mean, I know you have time to do it, you're not spending resources on making a giant worlds event, so um, what's going on here? DD Crazy Beast is a level 3 Earth Beast monster with 1400 attack and defense, and a monster this card destroys as a result of battle is removed from play. So it's not big, but whatever you run over is gonna get denied their graveyard effect, so slap a few attack boosts on this one and you'll be every Phantom Knight pilot's worst nightmare. And look! This is where we see Goblin Trainer begin their journey into becoming DD Trainer. What is with crazy beasts and goblins anyway? If this somehow ties into the Diabell lore, I'm gonna lose it. DD Patrol Plane is a level 3 Dark Machine monster with 1200 attack and 800 defense, and during the end phase, if this card is currently banished and was banished this turn, you can banish a card from your hand, field, or grave, and if you do, special summon this card in attack position. This is a modern companion to Scout Plane, being a way to actually get any stuck in the grave back into the banishing rotation. But it also works with all kinds of other Banish Matter style decks, so make sure you give this a whirl next time you're looking for some tech picks. But Something tells me they did the art upside down on this one. I think the radar dish is supposed to be on the other side. DD Seeker is a level 3 dark psychic monster that, as a quick effect, lets you target a face-up monster you control to banish it until the end phase of the next turn. So it's a temporary banish of any of your monsters at quick effect speed, mind you, but instead of the usual until the end of the turn, it waits all the way until the end of the next turn after that. Now, because you can summon this with emergency teleport, this is a generic way to blink your monsters out in response to targeted interaction. And if we were a cooler card game, this would be a sweet little ability that would see play from time to time. But instead, we're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! This doesn't stop it from being an absolutely banger design though, very gender on this one. DD Assailant is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1700 attack and 1600 defense, and after damage calculation, when this card is destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster, banish that monster, and also this monster. This was a pretty solid monster for its time, had a very good attack and defense spread, and if something managed to run over it, you could banish it in retaliation. When it comes to the revenge banishing you cards, it's not the best, but it's nothing to sneeze at either. If a monster can reverse grip a giant butcher knife like that, I don't mess with it. 
DD Destroyer is a level 4 warrior monster with a thousand attack and defense, and when this card on the field is removed from play, you can select a face-up card your opponent controls and destroy it. This is a rough one because the way it's worded, it does miss timing. So even if you set up Macro Cosmos or another banishing continuous effect, this has to be removed by an effect or by battle. No Link summoning shenanigans here. And those removals better not be at Chain Link 2 or higher. If that wasn't the case, this could potentially have been another battle body that cares about banishing to add to the crew. But even if this was fixed, I'd probably still turn him away at the door. That hair is unruly. Not that that necessarily is a problem, but you're giving fiend vibes here, but you're a warrior type, but uh, could you try to look the part at least? Dimensional Alchemist is a level 4 light fairy monster with 1300 attack and 200 defense, and once per turn you can activate this effect. Banish the top card of your deck, and if you do, until the end of the turn, this card gains 500 attack. When this card you control is destroyed and sent to the grave, you can target one of your banished monsters and add it to your hand. Now this card has a storied history. Effectively, on your turn, it was an 1800 attack normal summon, and that self banish mill could get you a really sweet monster into your hand once it got ran over. So this saw a lot of play as just a really good value monster and that value was multiplied if you were playing a deck that had any banishing synergies also uh is anyone else getting monarch vibes from this one uh, the breastplate and the gauntlet are one thing but i swear i've seen that skirt and leg armor somewhere else before and trust me i've been looking at a lot of armored legs recently dd guide is a level 4 dark warrior monster with 1400 attack and a thousand defense and when this card is normal summoned give control of it to your opponent and during each player's end phase your opponent selects a card from the grave of this card's controller and removes it from play that's right jeff leonard's deck master is here. If you kept up with the Master of Mystic Minds run, you'll remember that this is the key monster played to force his opponent to have a monster on their side of the field to lock them out of attacks and monster effects under that field spell. It's basically the card's claim to fame now, which is strange because it has little to do with the card's whole effect. Yeah, it does other things, effectively giving your opponent a monster so you could peel a card out of their graveyard every turn while they have it. But, you know, I can't really blame you for not knowing that because even if they wanted to use that effect, they couldn't. Mystic Mind stopped that effect from activating. But I think it's for the best that we never got the full experience. If you trust a person in a big cloak to guide you anywhere, I don't think your self-preservation instincts are firing off properly. DD Survivor is a level 4 dark warrior monster with 1800 attack and 200 defense. And during the end phase, if this card was banished while face up and on your side of the field this turn, special summon this banished card. This was another card integral to the Banishing Matters decks. As long as you had a banishing effect active, this would come back turn after turn, provided it did so on the field, which made it a little less reliable than Scout Plane, but it was worth it for that much larger stat line. And like Scout Plane, it made for great repeatable tribute fodder. And from the looks of it, they are not happy about that fact. Turns out being grinded into dust only to pop out of another dimensional rift does not do good things to your outlook on life. They may be a DD survivor, but they sure ain't DD living. DD Unicorn Knight is a level 4 light warrior monster that cannot be normal summoned or set. This card can only be special summoned from your hand if your opponent controls any number of monsters and you control any number of face up tuner monsters. When this card is special summoned this way, you can select one of your banished level 3 or lower non tuner monsters and special summon it. Its effects are negated, but you cannot normal summon or set the turn you special summon this card. This monster is so close to being one of the most cracked synchro cards in existence. I'd go so far as to say that if it didn't care about your opponent having monsters, this could have seen a lot of play. All you need is some kind of banishing outlet to get a non-tuner into, and tuners that special summon themselves to bypass the fact that we can't normal summon or set that turn. And then from there, we've got three materials, two non-tuners and a tuner, to make a variety of monsters with. It sounds like Trishula's wet dream, but we have to play the cards that exist, not the card that we want. And because we need our opponent to have monsters, it's not looking too good for us. Can you believe that this card came so close to being a game-breaking enabler, but came from a 5D's side character? That would be like saying that Mathematician was a game-altering normal summon because it sent just about any relevant monster from deck to graveyard, being a staple in so many decks for so many years, enabling a gigantic field of plays, and it originated from Bastion Misawa of all people who would do that dd warrior is a level 4 earth warrior monster with 1200 attack and a thousand defense and after damage calculation when this card battles a monster banish that monster also banish this card yeah 
anything it fights, and it has to double banish. It is mandatory, so be careful with what you pick to hit, because you can't take it back once you commit. It's probably why its comparison card was played over it. DD Warrior Lady is a level 4 light warrior monster with 1500 attack and 1600 defense, and after damage calculation, when this card battles an opponent's monster, you can banish that monster, also banish this card. Yep. Better stats, optional effect, arguably even a better attribute. Honestly, I don't expect anything less from the Lady Archetype, but once you get women involved, the cards just get too powerful. Uh, that's what Woke is doing to our game, by the way. DDM Different Dimension Master is a level 5 light spellcaster monster with 1700 attack and 1500 defense, and once per turn you can discard a spell card to special summon one of your removed from play monsters. So basically, it turns any spell into your hand into a monster reborn for your banishment. It's kind of like the zombie lord of the mechanic, and I can see a world where this would have been a huge cornerstone for a deck, but I imagine being level 5 made it harder to deploy, and thus not as efficient as an engine. But it still reeks of a card on the edge of playability, and I await this strange banishing deck that will one day take advantage of it. But first, they've gotta put some gloves on, cause those hands are definitely radioactive. Different Dimension Dragon is a level 5 light dragon monster with 1200 attack and 1500 defense, and this card cannot be destroyed by spell and trap effects that don't target it, so no dark holes or torrential tributes, but a tribute to the doomed will still work just fine. And it also can't be destroyed by battle with any monster that has 1900 or less attack. You might recognize this card as having been used by Kaiba a few times, but looking at it, there doesn't seem to be much to it other than being a huge nuisance that nonetheless folds to anything the size of a gene warped werewolf. I mean, it even has the worst version of a similar battle destruction protection effect that we've seen on other monsters. For example, Obnoxious Celtic Guardian can't be destroyed by battle with a monster that has 1900 or more attack, so if you increase its attack enough, it'll eventually become immune to battle destruction. Meanwhile, DD Dragon over here has an effect that becomes less useful the stronger it gets. Here's hoping we get some kind of retrain for this in the future, because you cannot be locking such a baller design to such a painfully unusable card. Dimension Shifter is a level 6 dark spellcaster monster with 1200 attack and 2200 defense, and if you have no cards in your graveyard as a quick effect, you can send this card from your hand to the grave, and until the end of the next turn, any card sent to the grave is banished instead. This is probably one of the most divisive cards released in the past decade. It's basically a hand trap macrocosmos for two turns that was released with let's say good intentions. This, Dark Ruler No More, and Nibiru, the primal being, made their debut in the 2019 Gold Sarcophagus tin as a trio of promos, billed as cards that would counter some of the strongest strategies at the time, with Shifter positioned as an answer to graveyard-reliant strategies. But as time went on, well, I'm reminded of that old quote, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Eventually, this was played even in decks that used the grave as a way to ruin the opponent plan with it, while you could play in a way that minimized the consequences for you. And as decks released that could control the field without relying on the grave, this became an instant include to auto-win a number of matchups, so it has since garnered a very negative reputation. And honestly, I can't fault the logic here, I'm kinda sick of this card myself. It's another in a long line of hand traps that are supposed to give the underdog a way to fight back against the people in control of the game, but has become another example of such cards being great tools for those already ahead in the game to widen the gap. And it's a real shame, uh, I hope a person smarter than me makes a video talking about these kind of design choices, their consequences, and how these could be fixed in the future, cause there's really gotta be a shift in how we do things around here. Oh, well, and I'm not being sarcastic as a way to advertise an existing video like I usually do. I really think this would make for a good research and discussion project. Please, someone, go make this! DD Assault Carrier is a level 8 dark machine monster with 2500 attack and defense that can't declare an attack unless you banish a card from your grave. And if exactly three of your cards are banished, you can special summon this card from your hand. This is the logical conclusion of the DD ship line, rewarding you for banishing cards with a huge gigantic creature that will continue to banish cards from your grave. It can banish your scout and patrol planes to get them into rotation, as well as other off-theme cards. It's pretty cool, and may seem to disprove my supposition that the patrol planes were presented upside down, but I think they're just continuing the bit here. Being upside down might just be their whole thing. Let's just turn this around and... 
perfect. Our last monster for this section is actually a retrain of DD Warrior, Dark Dimension Soldier, a level 5 Dark Warrior Synchro monster with 1200 attack and 2400 defense, requiring generic material. It can banish a card from your hand, then target one of your banished Dark monsters, and special summon it in either face up or face down defense position. During the end phase, you burn your opponent for 100 damage times the number of set cards on the field. This is an odd one because setting hasn't really been a part of our previous cards game plans so i have to imagine this is a reference to how cards like dd warrior and lady were played setting them face down from the hand to surprise your opponent when they eventually attacked into them but the funny thing is the first effect doesn't work with either of them because warrior is originally an earth attribute and lady is a light. Still, if you're a deck that ever banishes dark monsters and you have some synchro material to spare, having a way to get them back onto the battlefield ain't too shabby, especially if you want to explore the dark side of this dimension. Alright, that does it for the monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Different Dimension Capsule is a normal spell card that has you selecting a card from your deck and removing it from play face down, and during your second standby phase after activation, destroy this card and add the removed card to your hand. This was the predecessor to Gold Sarcophagus, giving you the chance to grab any card in the game on a two-turn delay. But there were some issues. Capsule had to survive long enough to actually get you that card, and there's no recourse for when it gets destroyed early, so if you're opponent hits this with removal, that card is lost face down forever. Gold Sark almost immediately power crept this, largely because it didn't stick around on the board to get MST. And while you gave up the information of what you're looking for thanks to Gold Sark banishing the card face up, that also facilitated a number of cards that liked being banished. So, much like the artifact this card is based on, this card is a thing of the past. DD Designator is a normal spell card that has you declaring a card name. You look at your opponent's hand, and if they have the declared card in hand, remove that one card from play. And if they don't have the declared card in hand, remove a random card in your hand from play. There are lots of ways to take a peek at your opponent's hand in this game, but they usually come with some ridiculous drawback or activation condition, and this one is no different. If you know that your opponent has a particular card, you can peel it right out of their hand. But if you're wrong, you're gonna have to pay the price. And it's probably for that reason why we don't see it used very often anymore. Trap Dust Shoot was a staple when it was legal and its activation conditions were relatively easy to meet. And while Mind Crush was on a one turn delay thanks to it being a trap card, the fact that the random card you would lose was sent to the graveyard instead of being banished made this infinitely more playable. Even in recent years, a Pointer of the Red Lotus was a strong going first option because it let you see your opponent's hand first, then you could choose the card your opponent would lose, with the only cost on your end being an admittedly decent chunk of life points. But losing a random card out of your own hand if your opponent doesn't end up having the hand trap you want to preempt can stop your game plan before it even starts. As is a running theme in this episode, there are some banishing strategies like Metaphys that wouldn't mind the drawback if you whiffed, but in general, you're gonna be pointing in the wrong direction. Dimension Hole is a normal spell card that selects a monster on your side of the field and removes it from play until your next standby phase. And while the monster is removed from play, the monster card zone of the selected monster cannot be used. This is an odd card. Normally, you want to use removal on your opponent's cards, but the idea is to banish your own monster that you want to keep safe through your opponent's turn, and then, when it comes back around to your turn, you've got your monster all safe, vacuum sealed, and ready to go. It's reminiscent of effects in other card games like Magic the Gathering, colloquially referred to as as blinking or flickering. But unless the subject has a banishing synergy, this will have nowhere near the kind of utility as other games use something like this for. But I do think it has one of the strongest interpretations of a tear in interdimensional space in Yu-Gi-Oh, with different sections being cracked and stretched into the great beyond. I knew posting hole would be a good idea. Dimension Distortion is a normal spell card that you can only activate if there are no cards in your grave. Select a removed from play monster and special summon it to your side of the field. So if you've somehow managed to keep your grave completely empty and you have a banished monster, you now have a monster reborn for that card. But even decks that do include banishing have something that goes to the grave. Even Dimension Shifter has to go there to activate its effect. To use this effectively, you'd need to be piloting a deck that eats up your graveyard cards, not caring about cards card type or anything else, and we don't have much of that. So it's hardly worth it to try to make use of that torsion, because we can barely make use of distortion. 
Dimension Fusion is a normal spell card that has you paying 2,000 life points to have both players special summon as many of their removed from play monsters as possible. This is one of the strongest spell cards ever printed. When it was legal, this combined with a number of Chaos cards to turn the cost of their summon into an army. And as we touched upon during the Cyber Dragon episodes, you could combine this with the card Cyber Valley and Spell Economics to create an infinite loop that could get you infinite draws and all the material you could ever ask for. So, yeah, this card is super banned, and I expect it to stay that way for the foreseeable future, since it's a card that's almost impossible to power creep. You could say it was a real Dimension Fusion Destruction. Burial from a different dimension is a quick play spell card that targets up to three banished monsters and returns them to the grave. This was used in a lot of themes that banished their monsters to gain advantage, especially in decks like zombies that could use this to recycle Mizukis. I also like how fitting it is as a comparison to other foolish burial cards, because our normal ones send cards to the grave, and so does this one just from a different dimension. And the idea of the denizens of that dimension throwing that stuff back into our world gives me big Simpsons vibes. Uh, Editor Nova, roll the clip. Quit throwing your garbage into our dimension. Sargasso Lighthouse is a quick play spell card that can be activated when a spell effect that would inflict damage to you is activated. You take no damage from that effect, and while this card is in your grave, you take no damage from the effects of the card Sargasso the DD Battlefield. And when this set card is sent to the grave, you can add a Sargasso the DD Battlefield from your deck to your hand. Uh-oh, looks like we're gonna have to take a look at a whole other card here really quickly to get the full scope of things. Sargasso the DD Battlefield is a field spell card, and each time a monster is exceeds up, Summoned, the summoning player takes 500 damage, and during each player's end phase, the turn player takes 500 damage if they control a face of Xyz monster. These cards come from the Zexal anime, but aren't used by any character in particular. Instead, the Sargasso is a dimension that our heroes are lured to to punish their extensive use of Xyz monsters, with the villains using Lighthouse to keep their own Xyz strategy safe. And honestly, this is really cool. I kind of wish we'd see more places from the anime get the field spell treatment, and to be fair, with cards like Dual Academy and Dual Terminal, we are seeing this more and more. But Sargasso was a field spell in the show, as well as being an actual location, so that kind of muddies the water a bit, uh, even though, despite the lighthouse, there aren't really any waters around here too muddy. DD Borderline is a continuous spell card, and while there are no spell cards in your grave, neither player can conduct their battle phases. It's an interesting stall card, giving you another way to keep your opponent at bay, but it does mean you can't play any spells if you want to maintain this. So no chaining together a ton of burn spells to close things out. At least, not if you can't do it all in one turn, or if you have a macro cosmos effect in play, which will keep your spells out of your grave. But because of all the setup you need to make this work, this card isn't even borderline playable. Dimensional Fissure is a continuous spell card that makes it so monsters sent to the grave are banished instead. This is one of the iconic iconic banishing cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, changing how games are played anytime it's in rotation, and it causes a lot of funky stuff to happen. Despite the fact that it cares about monsters being sent to Graveyard, it will still banish any Pendulum monster instead of them going to the face of Extra Deck. It stops anyone from activating effects that require monsters to be sent to Grave as cost, which covers a variety of hand traps, though it does not get in the way of cards that just care about you discarding a card, period. Those monsters will just get banished. But this doesn't touch spell and trap cards, which is funny considering that would be a big boon to DD Borderline. This is also often played alongside Macro Cosmos, which we won't go into the specifics of here, but it banishes everything sent to the grave instead of just monsters. So if you're on a mission to shut off the grave, these two cards should be your go-to. Now, if you'll excuse me, I now need to go on a 22-minute tangent on how this looks similar to the holes from the branded lore, which opens up all kinds of multiversal theories. Please, everyone, hold your applause. You can thank me after the show. DDR, Different Dimension Reincarnation, is an equipped spell card that has you discarding a card to target one of your banished monsters and special summoning it in attack position, equipping it with this card. And when this card leaves the field, destroy the equipped monster. This is another really strong option for any deck that banishes their own guards, because now you have a premature burial with a bit more of a steep cost. Unless you establish a draw loop, you won't be able to discard forever, but it does come with a lot of upsides. Any deck that plays well with equipped cards is going to have a field day with this, and while Mikanko don't do so in a way that works with this, Infernobles sure can. And a copy or two of Hidden Arsenal doesn't hurt either. Pull this off at just the right time, and you'll be dancing with joy. 
Different Dimension Deep Sea Trench is a continuous spell card, and when this card resolves, banish a water monster from your hand, grave, or face-up field. Then, when this face-up card on the field is destroyed, special summon that banished monster to your side of the field. This is another anime card, this one used by Shark, which explains its affinity for water. This means it's not quite in tune with the rest of the cards we've talked about so far, but it's got different dimension in the name, so we've got to cover it. Oh, uh, when you're down here in the explained trenches, you don't have much of a choice. Different Dimension Gate is a continuous spell card that you can activate by targeting a monster on each side of the field, and you banish both targets. And when this card is destroyed and sent to the grave, return those banished monsters to the field in the same battle position they were in. This lets you phase out one of your monsters to get an opponent's one out of the way, and this will all last until someone takes a lead pipe and breaks this thing open. It doesn't special summon the monsters back, which means you can't use this to cheese some kind of extra on summon effect, but the upside is, it means your opponent doesn't gain the same effect. And, if this gets destroyed and banished, you can ensure that both cards go away forever. That being said, this is a pretty ineffectual card in the grand scheme of things, but did give us a taste of what the different dimension was capable of mechanically, as well as aesthetically. When it comes to the banishment, this is very much a gateway card. Crevice into the Different Dimension is a normal trap card that has you declaring an attribute and selecting a total of two monsters with that attribute from the graveyards and removing them from play. Before we had more efficient graveyard hate, this would crop up from time to time as a way to get problem monsters out of the yard, especially against mono attribute matchups. But you can probably already see why this fell off the wayside. Not only was being a trap card too slow for an evolving metagame, the fact that we were restricted to only a single attribute was way too limiting, so it was only natural that Crevice would slip through the cracks. DDD Different Dimension Derby is a normal trap card that you can activate if you control a face-up monster that was ritual summoned using a normal monster or was fusion, synchro, Ixies, or link summoned using a normal monster as material, and it lets you target a card on the field and banish it. This is a goofy nod to all the Gaia extra deck monsters, many of them being non-effect monsters themselves. I'm not sure why they went through all the effort of tying this to the Different Dimension series of cards, the only thing any of this has to do with banishing is the effect itself, but here's hoping we get an alt arc that includes more denizens of the Different Dimension sometime in the future in a big race. After all, Goblin Trainer didn't spend all that time with Crazy Beast just to sit on the sidelines. DD Dynamite is a normal trap card that burns your opponent for 300 damage for each of their removed from play cards. Hey, did you know that this card enables an FTK? It's true! While only fairly recently, the idea is to find two copies of this card and a copy of Banquet of Millions. Set them both, pass over to your opponent's turn, then during their draw phase, use Banquet to banish every card out of your extra deck, which will in turn banish every card out of your opponent's extra deck. Then, they'll have 15 cards in the banishment, we can resolve two of those dynamites, and have each one deal 4,500 points of damage, equaling 9,000 for a game. This was used fairly often in Master Duel's early days to farm games, more often than not with bots since it was pretty easy to program. Whether they won or lost, the games would be over quickly so you could grind out end of game rewards and ladder points at light speed. It was so widespread that at one point it was actually optimal to run a 13 card extra deck, as two dynamites could then only deal 7800 points of damage. See, this is why we can't have rotation in Yu-Gi-Oh! This game is too friggin' funny when you can use 19 year old cards like this. DD Trap Hole is a normal trap card that you can activate when your opponent sets exactly one monster and no other cards. You target that set monster and a monster you control, destroy those targets, and if you do, banish them. So, it works like Bottomless Trap Hole, but instead of checking if a monster is summoned with 1500 or more attack, it hits them if they try to set that monster, presumably as a way to avoid Bottomless, but then you have to give up one of your monsters as well. This is a prime example of a card that would have worked really well with DD Scout Plane or Survivor, but I can't think of anything outside that narrow margin that would ever give this a second look. The only thing this card is good for is showing us that Moki Moki is in fact a bloodthirsty maniac that cannot be allowed to roam free. Recall the next speed duel set! The call is coming from inside the box! Different Dimension Encounter is a normal trap card that you can activate if both players have at least one banished monster that can be special summoned, and each player special summons one of their banished monsters in face-down defense position. So I guess you can play this in a deck that consistently banishes both players' cards, and you want to summon something face-down, but you don't mind that your opponent gets the similar treatment? This is basically a very silly card. I wouldn't add this to a serious deck, but any opportunity to show Greffer the horrors of the multiverse is time well spent. 
Different Dimension Ground is a normal trap card that, during the turn this card is activated, makes any monster sent to the grave banished instead. Yup, it's Dimension Shifter, but for monsters only. Nine years before that hand trap even existed. This was also a pretty neat side deck pick to solidify your turn one boards. You get all the benefits of your grave on your turn, and your opponent gets nothing. You know what? It turns out using a Lingering Floodgate has always been problematic for the game. Maybe making it even easier to access was probably a bad idea. Dimensional Inversion is a normal trap card that you can activate only when any number of monsters you own are removed from play by an opponent's effect, and Special Summons one of those monsters. Sadly, this can only be used reactively since it only checks if your opponent banished the cards, but the cool thing is that it doesn't care from where. If they hit you with Soul Release, you can get one of those monsters back. Has Joshua Schmidt's clone army invaded your regionals and runics are running rampant? Use this to summon one of the monsters banished by those effects. And those are basically all the use cases for this card, and they all bite. Honestly, what gets me is the fact that Greffer's arm is infected by the different dimension filter. Is the dark dimension like a disease or something? Dimensional Prison is a normal trap card that you can activate when an opponent's monster declares an attack, targeting the attacking monster and banishing that target. This was a format staple back in the day. Beforehand, it was Sakuretsu Armor, but destroying wasn't good enough, and this stepped up and took that spot, because banishing is almost always better than letting the card go to the grave. You'll be seeing this all the time in older formats, so make sure you don't get your Machina Fortress caught in one of these things, because you're not going to be seeing any kind of prison abolition anytime soon. Dimension Wall is a normal trap card that you can activate when an opponent's monster declares an attack, and makes your opponent take the battle damage you would have taken from that battle. It's basically an alternate magical cylinder, it doesn't need to target the attacking monster, though instead of dealing damage equal to the attack of the attacking monster, it reflects the battle damage taken. So if you aren't using this against a direct attack, this will have a lower impact on their life points. It also doesn't negate the attack like Magic Cylinder, which could be good if you want them to avoid getting any kind of trigger for their monster destroying an another, but if you want your monster to be destroyed, Dimension Wall is the right call. It's basically a toss-up. The only advice I have for you with this card is not to trust anyone, not even yourself, especially when the dimensional portals are involved. How did he end up getting that sword through there, huh? Interdimensional Matter Transporter is a normal trap card that targets a face-up monster you control and banishes that target until the end phase. This is basically a better dimension hole. I don't have much to add here that I haven't already touched on, except it returns sooner and can be used at optimal times in response to other effects. Any other differences don't really matter. Return from the Different Dimension is a normal trap card that has you paying half your life points to special summon as many of your banished monsters as possible, and during the end phase, banishes all monsters special summoned by this effect. This is largely comparable to Dimension Fusion, with some important distinctions. On the downside, it can potentially cost you more life points, and you lose the monsters during the end phase. Not to mention, as a trap card, it's not as immediately deployable as Dimension Fusion. But on the upside, it could potentially cost you less life points, as you'll always have at least half your life points, and it only summons your own monsters, so you don't have to worry about gifting your opponent anything. And thankfully, because of these differences, Return from the Different Dimension is also banned, you fools! Even with the slower speed, being able to summon a bunch of monsters is out of this world, especially after you banish so many of your other cards to fuel your effects. And can you imagine what this could do today with Transaction Rollback? Yeah, this card isn't returning anytime soon. Escape from the Dark Dimension is a continuous trap card that targets one of your banished dark monsters and special summons that target. When this card leaves the field, destroy that target, and if you do, banish it, and when that target is destroyed, destroy this card. This is basically Call of the Haunted for dark monsters that are banished, with the added caveat that the monster you summon gets banished if they pop escape instead of going to the grave. It's pretty neat if you have an older format that can support this, but any theme that uses banishing nowadays has way more efficient methods to pull monsters from the banishment. And as these tools get better, this card's lack of relevancy is something we can't really escape. Alright, now we get to the part of the video that talks about a kind of archetype. We're once again turning our eyes towards Zexel, focusing on the character Nelson Andrews. They're a child actor who plays a character of whom the ace monster of the deck is named Sparrow, or as it's known in the original Japanese, DD Esper Robin. I know! It has almost nothing to do with the cards we've talked about so far, but when else are we gonna have a chance to talk about them? 
So let's take a quick look at the Sparrow family. There's no overarching theme to the cards. The big play is to summon DD Jet Iron, a level 10 light machine monster with 4,000 attack and zero defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from your hand by sending a DD Esper Star Sparrow, Beast Warrior Puma, Phoenix Beast Gyruda, and Iron Hammer the Giant from your hand and or face up from your side of the field to the grave. You can also tribute this card to target one each of those component monsters in your grave and special summon them. Yeah, this all basically boils down to a theme with a gigantic monster that's difficult to summon, but at least they made it 4k. Notably, it's a must first be special summoned monster, so you can actually revive this with a number of cards once you've summoned it out the legit way. But what about those component monsters? Firstly, we have the main character, DD Esper Star Sparrow, a level 10 light warrior monster with 3000 attack and 1500 defense, and there can only be one copy of this card on the field. While on the field, your opponent can't target any other monsters you control with attacks or effects. And when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack while this card is in your grave, you can special summon this card from your grave in face of defense position, but is banished when it leaves the field. Dang, if Sparrow had a better defense, this could actually see play as a useful blocker that directly our opponent's threats away from our other monsters, but in reality, it lacks an efficient way to hit the field, so it's not really going anywhere. Iron Hammer the Giant is a level 8 Earth Rock monster with 900 attack and 3500 defense that you can special summon from your hand if you control DD Esper Star Sparrow, Beast Warrior Puma, and Phoenix Beast Gyruda. While this card is face up on the field, it can't change its battle position, and once per turn, you can target a monster you control, and it can attack your opponent directly this turn. I mean, if you can pair this with Jet Iron, that's a hefty chunk of damage you can do. And even if you just have Star Sparrow, a 3k direct attack ain't bad either. The battle position of is honestly the funniest thing about it. It's like they were worried we were so desperate for a direct attacker that we'd actually normal summon this, so they had to make sure that if we did so, it was just a 900 attack dingus. But hey, I wouldn't say no if I flipped this off the top of my deck with an Ad Emancipator Risen Raptite. Speaking of big birds, Phoenix Beast Gyruda is a level 6 wind winged beast monster with 2500 attack and 1200 defense, and if this card attacks an opponent's monster, this card gains 300 attack during the damage step only. Yup, it's a one tribute monster with summon skull stats that gets slightly larger when it goes in to attack a monster. Neat. Anyway, here's Beast Warrior Puma, a level 4 light Beast Warrior monster, can you believe it? With 1600 attack and 1000 defense, and you can tribute this card to add a DD Esper Star Sparrow from your deck or grave to your hand. Summoning it once you get it though, eh, that's something you'll have to figure out on your own. But hey, at least we can use Fire Formation Tanky to help with consistency, right? Now, that covers the main deck Nelson crew, but there are a few more I feel compelled to mention real quick. All of these previously mentioned monsters, sans Jet Iron, are featured on the card Galaxy Queen's Light, a normal spell card that targets a level 7 or higher monster you control, and the level of all other face-up monsters you currently control become the level of that monster until the end phase. And that was used targeting Star Sparrow, giving Nelson the material to accept Sea Summon Super Dimensional Robot Galaxy Destroyer, a rank 10 Light Machine Exceeds monster with 5,000 attack and 2,000 defense, requiring three level 10 monsters as material. And once per turn, you can detach an Exceeds material from this card to destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls, and your opponent can't activate spell or trap cards in response to this effect's activation. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet effect. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster at spell speed 4 means they won't be able to use counter traps like Solemn Strike to stop this. But there is a bit of time between when this card is summoned and when you can activate the effect where it can get bounced, destroyed, or negated, so it's not as foolproof as it might look. Though it does still get to keep that massive 5k body. A very niche pick, but could see some usage in rank 10 machines if they're desperate enough for back row removal. Now we just have to square the fact that this is also a galaxy card. Thanks designers, now I've got to bring these up again when talking about Kite Explain. And actually, it's not the last Galaxy card we have to talk about. I mean, we've seen Galaxy Queen's Light, but what about the Queen? Well, that's going to be number 83, Galaxy Queen, a rank 1 Dark Spellcaster Exceeds monster with 500 attack and defense, requiring 3 level 1 monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, and until your opponent's next end phase, the monsters you currently control can't be destroyed by battle, and they deal piercing battle damage. This can help with Esper and Jet Iron getting in for lethal, since they can now push through defense position monsters, and with Esper redirecting attacks away from the Queen, its low stats won't be an issue. But if you know anything about this card, it's not because of 
its stats, but because this card takes on the image of Nelson Andrew's mother, leading to one of the most iconic lines in the Zexel dub. You just summoned your mom. All right, that about covers everything. There isn't really any tech picks or a Nova scale that I could give here. These really are as loose a pile of cards as it gets. So with that being said, I'd love to hear what you all have to say about them. Which cards do you think deserve their own fully fledged archetype? Should the Sparrow family be given the core set treatment? And which one out of all these cards are your favorite? Like I said beforehand, I love the art for Different Dimension Dragon. As a Legend of Dragoon stand myself, I love fucked up little dragons. Uh, let me know all your thoughts down below, and if you haven't already, please be sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and be sure to share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons, as well as the lovely people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and save 5% on your order by using the coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. Today's episode was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commanders Sir Knight JCB and the Critic of Innocence, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zajdel, Anansi Dragon, Andrew Newman, Kane Senpai, Christopher Fuss, Clockswork, Emony Chan, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Frankie, Garland Chaos, Green Knight, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Groog, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iron Zero, Iskander 711, Carp, Mana Charge, Marion James E. Piccata, Mega Combi, Millennia Asta, Muzuki Clark, Nathan Vig, Natiel Lee Alexander, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Red Eyes Jackalow, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Serenity Towns, Sky Buster Leo, That One Dumbass and the Wizard Moose, Cosmic Crusaders Alpha Sly, Almento 5010, A Random Pup, Ariel Kersey, Berin Von Titty Sprinkles, Beluga Masta, Blitz Wolf, Blue Gem, Borger with a Shotgun, Callum McCann, Chaz Ghost, Childish Lamar, Dr. Reaper R.I.P., Rockenwald, Eki Bullock, Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Herbal D, Ignis Heat the True Draco Slayer, In Blink, Jester Designs, Kale the Dragon, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lemon Yu Gi Oh!, Manga Pages, Marluxia is a Girl, Matt Simmons, Mick Spoofy, Michael Shimabukuro, Nitromo, Obsidian, Ramen Resurrect Chan, Shizuki Nijimura, Sophie, apparently, Stephen Williamson, Taylor Seymour, Terror Top to 3, The Legendary Raven, and Zeldreka, as well as the lovely Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, get my videos early, be a part of these credits and other awesome perks, it would mean the world to me if you checked out the link to my Patreon in the description or considered joining as a YouTube member. And if you'd like to see another episode about a group of unrelated monsters that otherwise share a common theme, why not feed your need for lore with this playlist featuring the living lore of the Dual Terminal. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye